in the previous video, we were talking about permuting objects that were distinguishable from each other or distinct. Um, now we're going to talk about objects that are not distinct from each other. So what do we mean by distinct? Um, imagine that we have objects A, B, and C. We can tell them apart. So permutations for this would include A first, then B, then C, B, A, C, C, A, B, C, B, A, and so on. So there would be three factorial different permutations because we'd have three options for the first um, slot, two options for the second, and then one option for the last one. All right, so now we're going to talk about objects that are not distinct. So now imagine we have one A and two Bs, and we want to permute these. Um, so what would these permutations look like? Well, we could have A first and then the two Bs. We could have the two Bs first and then the A, or we could have the A sandwiched in between the two Bs. So we can see when we have um, objects that are not distinct from each other, then we have fewer permutations than when we have objects that are distinguishable from each other. All right, so let's talk about a theorem. The number of ways to arrange n objects, assuming that we have n1 of one type, n2 of the next type, and then blah, 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 all the way down to nr of the rth type, is going to be n factorial divided by n1 factorial times n2 factorial times dot, 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 nr factorial. All right, so why are we dividing by this? So first, what's in the numerator? It's n factorial. So that's saying, like, imagine these n objects were actually distinguishable from each other. Then we know we would have n different, n factorial different ways to arrange those n objects. But the objects are not distinguishable from each other. So in other words, these n1 objects are all identical, or in other words, exchangeable. And similarly, when we get to the second category, we have n2 of that type. Those are also all exchangeable. And so we need to divide by the number of ways that we could exchange the n1 ob objects of type 1. We need to count the number of ways that we could exchange the n2 objects of type 2, and so on. So we need to divide by um, these numbers down in the denominator. So that's the intuition for why this counting is true. OK, so a couple notes about this. This quantity down here is called a multinomial coefficient. And when we just have two categories, such as successes, failures, heads, tails, pass, fail, um, then it's called a binomial coefficient. And we can actually write that like this. So if we just have two categories, then we could say we have n trials and then k successes, and that would mean n minus k failures. So then we would write this multinomial coefficient in the two category case as n factorial times the number of successes factorial times the number of failures factorial. And we can write that um, in a shortcut way as n choose k like that. Sometimes you also see it like this. Okay, so let's do an example. So imagine that you're turning 21 and you're going to celebrate your 21st birthday by eating 21 cookies. So you have 10 Thin Mints, 5 Oreos, and 6 Oatmeal Raisin Cookies. Um, now imagine like these 10 Thin Mints, they all look exactly the same. They're essentially like identical or exchangeable. Similar thing for the Oreos and similar thing for the Oatmeal Raisin Cookies. So now you're wondering, how many different orders could I eat these cookies in? Like I could eat all of the Thin Mints first, and then all the Oreos, and then all the Oatmeal Raisin, or I could eat one Thin Mint, one Oreo, one Oatmeal Raisin, all those different orders. So how many different orders could we eat in? Well, we have N1 equals 10, N2 equals 5, and then N3 is equal to 6. And then the total N, we get that just by adding up all of these sub categories um, is the total n is 21. So we have 21 factorial divided by the number of Thin Mints factorial times the number of Oreos factorial times the number of Oatmeal Raisin Cookies factorial. 